ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله تعالى واحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ان الشمس والقمر ايتان من ايات الله after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations upon his messenger once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for another day wherein we can celebrate his praises and worship him and seek his forgiveness the hadith that we mentioned is a portion of the hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he mentioned that indeed the sun and the moon they are two signs from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hadith continues but the portion of the hadith that we want to reflect upon is this that the sun and the moon are two signs from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was that as i was returning home from the masjid and i would and i was driving and i looked up in the sky and i saw the full moon and i was amazed at its brilliance and its magnificence and the fact that the sun and the moon are signs from Allah means that there 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 is a there is something of reflection that must be done whenever we see them and as i saw the moon and i looked at the moon and marveled at its magnificence i saw that it was a full moon and the fullness of the moon is an indication that we are midway through the month and that struck me today barakallahu fikum is the 16th day of ramadan today is the 16th day of ramadan let that sink in for a moment 16 days have already gone of this of this blessed month a tremendous month a month of opportunity a month that cannot be passed up a month that we shouldn't just pass by like it is any other month this is a tremendous month and 16 days or we are in the 16th day of that month half of the month has already passed by and so upon that this is a point at which we should reflect this is a moment which we should which we should take for reflection and contemplation half of the month of forgiveness has already passed by half of the month of being freed from the hell fire has already passed by half of this month has already gone and Allah knows best whether we will see out the rest of the month and so because we need to reflect we need to ask ourselves myself yourself us all of us what have we gained thus far what have we gained from this blessed month thus far have we have have we have have we have achieved anything in this month 
Have we changed? Has our behavior changed? Have we adapted to the month? Because the speed of the month is going so quickly that perhaps we haven't even adapted to the month. We haven't began to do the things that we're really supposed to do within this month. Of recitation of the Quran. And not just merely recitation of it, but understanding it and reflecting upon it, its meanings. The deeper meanings that are within the Quran. It is a month for drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many nights of taraweeh have we stood? And of those nights, how many of them have we really, really stood with khushu in those prayers? Or has it just become habitual that we come to the masjid, we pray, or we carry out the acts of prayer, and then we leave? And then we get back to what we were doing prior to, before we came. It's a month of sadaqah. It is a month of rahmah, a month of mercy, a month of ghufran and maghfirah, forgiveness, and a month when we believe that we are from those who perhaps Allah is freeing from the fire. Because we know our state, we know how we are, we know our reality, regardless of how we dress up in front of the people, we know our state. So, have we benefited from this month thus far? What have we done? Indeed, we are midway through. And this month of Ramadan, it will pass us by because time doesn't wait. Time is not going to wait for any one of us. The days will continue, the months will continue. And we will continue in them up until Allah takes us away. It is a month of ihsan and carrying out good. A month of kindness and consideration to others. Not only those who don't have food and drink, but those who are, maybe Allah is tested with an affliction, ill in health, or even they're sound in health, but they have to look after those who are ill in health. And so they, they can't benefit the way that they would normally benefit from this month of coming to the masjid and sitting with their brothers and their sisters and standing with their brothers and their sisters in this month. So if you are from those who Allah has blessed with the likes of good health and Allah has blessed you with food and Allah has blessed you with drink and other than that from the blessings, should we then not be thankful to Allah? Giving Allah that which he deserves, something of it of praise giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the worship that he created us for, that we should worship him. In regards to the narration that is mentioned, i.e. that narration that is weak, that the scholars of hadith, they mention that it, it is da'if and munkar, that narration that mentions shahr Ramadan, awwaluhu rahmatun, wa awsatuhu maghfiratun, wa akhiruhu itkun minan nar. As for that statement, then that statement is weak. It is a weak hadith that the beginning of Ramadan is mercy and the middle of it is forgiveness and the end of it is freeing from the fire. Rather, Sheikh Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he says all of Ramadan is rahmah and all of Ramadan is maghfirah and all of Ramadan is itqun minan nar. It is all mercy. It is all forgiveness. It is all freeing from the fire. The whole month. 29 to 30 days of mercy and forgiveness and freedom from the fire. Yet we have individuals who this month comes and it passes them by and they did not increase in Iman. This month comes and it passes them by and they didn't receive forgiveness from Allah. This month comes and passes them by and it only increases them in regards to the fire. Such a blessed month that Allah has blessed us with, shown us his mercy, opened the doors of paradise, closed the doors of the hellfire and has chained up the devils 
that would normally encourage you and enhance you and entice you to do evil. All of that is taking place in this month. And yet, there are individuals who meet this month, enter into it, and exit it in a worse state than when they entered it. May Allah make us not from them. So we ask ourselves, how have we safeguarded ourselves thus far? Have we protected ourselves from that which we know Allah has awaited for those disobedient slaves? Have we hastened and raced to Allah's forgiveness? Have we competed between one another in performing good deeds, in giving in charity, in doing those deeds and hastening and want to be ahead of my brother? Not because I want, to, I want my brother to lose out, but because I want khair for myself and also I want khair for him. So we compete between each other. Let me pay for this. Let me purchase that. Let me donate to this. This is how we should be between one another. Racing towards the good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jabir ibn Abdullah. He mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on an occasion, he rose the member, he ascended the member. And when he stepped on the first step of the member, he said, Amin. And then he ascended the second step and again he said, Amin. And then the third step and again he said, Amin. So the companions, because they were curious, they asked, Ya Rasulullah, you said, Amin thrice. Why was that? He said, indeed, Jibreel came to me and he said, wretched be the one who Ramadan comes or he reaches Ramadan. He re wretched be the slave who reaches Ramadan and it passes him by and he is not forgiven. Kul Amin, he said. So he said, I said, Amin. How can we allow this blessed month to come? And Allah does not forgive us. Bearing in mind that he has left, that he has made so many opportunities for forgiveness to be accepted. So many, so many doors and avenues of khair. So many doors and avenues of good that can be achieved in this month. How then can a person enter this month and let it exit and not be forgiven? Subhanallah. Regarding our time. It is important that we use our time wisely. We use our time wisely, intelligently. And regarding the time, our time, as far as it relates to us, then there are three states. We have that time which has already passed. We have that time which is in the future. And we have that time which is the present. In regards to the time which has passed, it has gone. There's nothing that you or I or we can do about it. It has gone. It's past us. The only thing we can do in regards to that time is one of two things. Either we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for acceptance of our deeds that we have put forward already. Or we ask Allah for forgiveness. For those sins and those errors and those mistakes. That's the only thing you can do with that which has passed. In regards to the future. Then we don't know if we're going to reach it. We don't know if we're ever going to attain it. And all we can do really. Is ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we reach it. That we're able to reach it. Just like our salaf they used to mention. Allahumma baligna Ramadan. They would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, allow us to reach Ramadan. Allow us to reach it. And then after Ramadan had passed, they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it. So they would spend time before the, before the advent or before the arrival of Ramadan, asking that they may reach it because they know that this is a golden opportunity. It's an amazing opportunity for forgiveness. It's an amazing opportunity that a person can attain such great reward. A lifetime, perhaps, if he reaches it. And then you have waqt al-an, waqt al-hadir. The time that we're in, the moment that you're in now. And by the permission of Allah, that is the only 
moment that you have control over. That is in your hands by the permission of Allah. So what will we do within it? What we will do in that time, that time that Allah has blessed us with, that we have the ability and some control or a portion of control over it. We will, uh, will we obey him in it? Or will we disobey him in it? We will waste away that time. Time is precious, ya ikhwan. Time is precious. Particularly for those who are elder in age or getting older in age. The message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned in meaning that the age of my ummah بين ستين إلى سبعين is between 60 and 70 years between 60 and 70 years that is the age of this ummah i.e. the average lifespan of this ummah and how few are able to live beyond that how few live beyond that so if you are like Many of us, grey in beard, 50, 60, and this does not mean it's restricted to that. Death is not restricted to that. But if you are in that age group, then prepare. We should be in preparation for death. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he told us that the age of his ummah is between 60 and 70. Don't listen to the statistics don't listen to the journals. Don't listen to the research. We're now living longer lives. Sadaqa Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't lie. He spoke the truth. 60 and 70. That is the age bracket. As for those who are trying to deceive you by making you believe that we're living longer lives because we are eating healthier and we are exercising and we're living these types of life. Prophet Sassam told us between 60 and 70 years. Akuli kauli hadha wa astaghfiru Allahu wa lakum wa astaghfiru inna Allah ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. So it is important that we take these moments, these opportunities and that we grab them and grasp onto them with our two hands firmly. Because the reality is we do not know whether or not we will see another Ramadan. Ramadan comes once a year. It comes and then it goes. And once it goes, none of us can guarantee that we will see another Ramadan. So we are brothers and our sisters. We are definitely in need of this blessed month a month wherein that month there is a a night which is better than a thousand months of worship the one who is able to attain that night then he has achieved a great reward or a great affair a tremendous affair we have just mentioned that this ummah his age is between 60 and 70. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering to us one night which is better than a thousand months. What is a thousand months? More than 80 years. More than 80 years. And our average lifespan is 60 to 70. So imagine receiving that night one Ramadan, after another Ramadan, after another Ramadan, after another Ramadan. For 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, catching that night. A blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that this ummah could compete with those previous nations. Like the nation of Nuh. Nuh alayhi salam calling his people for 950 years, just calling them. As for how long he lived prior to being a prophet and how long he lived after being a prophet, Allah knows best. But with this night, we can catch up and perhaps outstrip those previous nations. And so anyone who sleeps 
on this night out of laziness or is heedless in regards to this night or he is in, engaged in worldly affairs in this night such a person has indeed been deprived he has been deprived Allah didn't aid him or assist him upon good and so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the passing of time and with the closing of Ramadan we still have opportunity there is still time there is still time to turn around the affair if we haven't benefited from it we still have those last 10 nights we still got 5 or 15 14 nights where we can draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is able to facilitate that and so we ask Allah oh Allah aid us in this month of Ramadan oh Allah guide us in this month of Ramadan oh Allah bless us in this month of Ramadan oh Allah allow us to achieve and attain Laylatul Qadr in this month of Ramadan Wallahu a'lam wa bilahi tawfiq